We practiced interpreting graphs today in class, and while the um, front of the homework is definitely pretty straightforward and pretty easy, the back of the homework is, um, it seems simple because you're just matching situations with graphs, but it's actually, you actually have to think pretty carefully about each one of these to get them right. Um, I'm just double checking something. Okay, so I want to do problem number two. First, the directions say choose the best graph for the given situation. Copy and graph, copy the graph and label the axes with the variables given in parentheses. The first variable goes on the y-axis and the second variable on the x-axis. So we have um, the situation for number two. Karina walked from home to the library, did some homework, then walked back. And the variables in parentheses are speed and time. The first variable goes on the y-axis, so my y-axis is representing speed, and the x-axis, the independent variable, is time as it often is. Time. The, the x-axis is, is very often time. Not always, but very often. Um, so Karina walked from home to the library. So the ver in this situation, the very first thing that's happening is she's walking from home to the library. So she's got some typical walking speed probably. It's not, it's not one of these problems where it's, we're graphing the distance she walked, in which case we would see this increasing line as she walked farther and farther. She's walking at some certain speed, whatever that speed is, to the library. And then once she gets to the library, she stops walking. So the graph should go down to zero. Um, she did some homework at the library, so time's passing, and she's not walking, so her speed is zero. And then she walks back home, so her speed goes from zero back up to her typical walking speed, and then she, she walks back home, uh, which takes some amount of time. And then I guess she gets home and she stops walking again. So that the graph that matches that is O. So um, for number two, we'll, we'll choose O as the best graph to represent that situation. So underneath any two, you put the letter O. I think there's only one. The other problem I want to look at is um, number seven. Kevin carried a box of school yearbooks from the office to his classroom. And we're graphing the weight of the box compared to the number of books in the box. So our, our graph will look like this again. Um, the independent, uh, the dependent variable what does it say? The first variable goes on the y-axis, so the, the, indep uh, the dependent variable is weight of the box. And then the independent variable is the number of books in the box. I want you to try to figure out which one of these graphs represents this situation during the pause, but one thing to, to keep in mind is this point at this point right here at the origin we know the origin is zero zero so that would represent zero books in the box at, if there are zero books in the box what do you think the weight of the box would be would there be any weight in the box consider that and then try to pick the graph that best matches during the pause pause I think with zero books in the box that the box would still weigh something because the box of course has some own weight some weight of its own so it's definitely not uh, graph u because graph u says with uh, zero books in the box it doesn't even it doesn't even make sense because this doesn't even say it has zero weight it says it has some negative weight I guess if I extend this line u makes no sense at all it's it's either l or e but then the question is why why does e, does e have this continuous line going up this way and L has this discontinuous um, series of points. I have to think about this. When, when there's one, one book in the box, the box, the box weight is going to go from, let's say the box weighed one pound 
and just to keep it simple, let's say every book weighs one pound, every te every yearbook weighs one pound. So is the box gonna the weight of the box gonna slowly go up from zero to I mean from one to two, or is it gonna just change from the one pound box to two pounds with the book inside? It's gonna be more like that. Where with one book inside, with zero books inside, it weighs one pound. With one book inside, it weighs two pounds. With two books inside, it weighs one pound more than it did before, so three pounds. And so our, our graph is going to have this discontinuous look where each extra book um, increases the weight instantly to some higher weight. That's why L is the best choice in this case. I hope that helped with the homework. I'll see you tomorrow.